Hey, happy campers. Todd here, Great American RV Superstores, and today we're going to be talking about our 110 systems and our towable units. So let's check it out. So here we are in a fifth wheel right now, and it has a 50 amp service. This would be our cover for our breaker panel. We've already unscrewed it. We're gonna pull that out of the way. As you can see here, we have our 12 volt and our 110. These connections right here for our 12 volts are coming in from our battery and going out to our converter. Our converter, if you recall, charges our battery system. That would be 110 to 12 volts that it converts. And this is our entire 110 panel right here. Now, if you are plugged into a 50 or 30 amp service, regardless, or have a generator running, this is going to have 110 volts going to it. So if you were to remove that cover, I always advise customers to make sure the breaker is off at the power pole or the unit is unplugged or your generator is shut down, make sure you don't have any power going to this panel before you go pulling it apart. So the only intent in pulling it apart is just to show you that it is 100% similar to a household type system. We have our 110 system coming in. In this case, it is a 50 amp service. So that means we have two poles of 110 volts coming into our 50 amp breakers right here, two separate pole breakers. And that is our 50 amp system that feeds out to each set of breakers that go to our AC, our fireplace, our TVs, and so on throughout our unit. If we were to put our red lead to the breaker and our black lead to the neutral or ground, that would provide us with that 110 confirmation that we have voltage at that breaker and it is going out to our appliance. If we had a 30 amp system, we would see a single 110 line coming in here to a 30 amp breaker and then dispersing out to all of our appliances. Once again, we mentioned our 12 volt system. Those are our 12 volt fuses there. We have more information about that in our 12 volt systems for our towable units. It's about everything we can cover on the inside besides the basic fact that if you have any trouble with your components on the inside of your unit or outside, we want to go to this breaker panel first and make sure none of these breakers are actually tripped, which may flip down or they might, if they're actually tripped, they would be, hang about halfway and feel a little loose, in which case you trip it down and then you reset that breaker by flipping it back up and you should return voltage back to that appliance. Now, 110 systems also have a GFCI in any wet bay location, so we'll take a look at that real quick next. So I mentioned our GFCI in this particular case, it is located in the kitchen. Sometimes it can be found in the bathroom as well. Uh, but you're gonna have, just like in your house, a reset and a test button. That test button will cut out the power after that GFCI, and it's, it's basically a breaker. By hitting that test button, you're tripping the breaker. In order to reset it, you hit that reset button, and it will restore power to those outlets that are GFCI protected. This, once again, is gonna be found in all of your wet locations, and they generally have a little tag on them that say GFCI protected. So this is the first place you wanna to go to whenever you have issues with those outlets. Check and make sure that it is able to be reset. If it constantly trips every time you reset it, unplug any appliance, hair dryers, coffee pots, anything of that nature that you might have plugged into that, those GFCI protected outlets, you wanna unplug and then go back and try to reset it. If it resets and there's no issue, from there, plug those items in one at a time to figure out which one is giving you the issue. Another thing to keep in mind, if it will not reset at all, you wanna ensure that you have power at your main breaker on your pole or down in your breaker panel on the interior of your unit because most oftentimes these will not reset if they don't actually have 110 power going to them. So it may be an issue at a different source somewhere down the line. So here we can see we have our 50 amp service. This is gonna be four prongs. This top round prong right here is gonna be your ground. This bottom prong right here is going to be our neutral and the two outer prongs are gonna be where our two legs of 110 power are coming in. As we can see here, we have our 30 amp plug, just three prongs on this. 
this round pin at the top, once again, our ground. And one of these pins is gonna be our neutral and the other one is gonna be our single 110 leg going into our camper. Now, no matter what you have, a 50 or a 30 amp system, you wanna make sure that you check these plugs out and make sure you don't see any uh, corrosion, any burnt melting or anything like that. That is signs of over amperage on the system. And it can cause some major safety issues if this wiring or anything becomes melted or damaged. And we wanna make sure that we can prevent that anytime we can. So anytime you're going to plug in, inspect your plug, inspect the source where you're plugging it into and make sure everything looks okay. So in the event we have a generator, you will also have what is called a transfer switch. This transfer switch decides where that power is going to come from. So we can see here, we have our generator wiring right here with our two poles coming in and our power cord with our two poles coming in. And then our control panel here, this would go out to what is our breaker panel. And we can see where these wires will feed from these sources to our control panel. It will decide that if our generator is running and providing power, it will pull from the generator and send it over to the control panel. If we are plugged in, it will pull from the power cord power to our control panel. So this is basically just a diversion of where that power is coming from and what it's going to connect to. Now, automatically, if you have the generator and power cord both on, generally it's going to come from the power cord source. Once you unplug it, it will automatically kick over to the generator. And that goes regardless of what power source you're going from one to the other, this is all 100% automatic and will choose the power source on its own. So if you're ever having an issue where you are running your generator and it's not kicking over, you're not having any power, number one, you wanna check your breakers at the generator itself and uh, from there you can apply a multimeter make sure we're getting generator power here and apply the multimeter here to make sure it is actually transferring over and that the relays aren't stuck same thing for your power cord now once again this is high voltage it's 110 volts on each leg coming through uh, 50 amps of service so you want to be sure you know what you're doing if you ever pull this panel off and probe it with the meter to ensure that you don't injure yourself make sure that you have the knowledge before you go diving in this deep. Now also in some units, we may have what's called an inverter. That inverter may power our residential fridges or other small appliances throughout the unit in the event that you are boondocking. What an inverter does is it inverts 12 volts to 110. So it gives us the ability without being plugged in or running a generator if so equipped, we can pull from our batteries. So if you have multiple battery banks, you can turn that inverter on and it is gonna pull that 12 volts and turn it into 110 volts, inverting that power source. And this will provide only to usually a few of the outlets, like I said, mainly your residential fridges or maybe a couple of outlets for a TV, depending on how the system is set up. Those are all the items that provide you 110. So we talked about the generator, the inverter, and our plug-in. So that covers the simple education on our 110 system. That tells you where our power comes from and where it goes from there. Hope that answered any questions or gave you an idea of how that system works and where you can go to in the event that something isn't operating properly. If you have any questions, comments, make sure you leave them down in the comment section below. Make sure you also hit subscribe, like, follow, share all those awesome things on Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, wherever you found us today. And keep watching here at Great American RV Superstores where we bring the how-to to you. Make it, make it.